What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to use the V-Ray frame buffer. We're going to talk about the V-Ray light mix history and all the other tools. So let's get right into it. In 3DS Max, there are two ways to access a V-Ray frame buffer. The first one is through setting then, render which opens up the V-Ray frame buffer, and two other windows. The first windows, V-Ray messages, show us what's going on in the background and tell us if there is any warning or errors. The second window shows us the rendering progress and lets us stop or cancel the render. Another way to access the V-Ray frame buffer is from the V-Ray toolbar. Select the icon and it will open up the V-Ray frame buffer. When you click on this icon, you can start and stop the render. If you want to switch between cameras, long press the icon on the far right, and it will show you the cameras available in the scene, and you can select whichever you want. Maximize the window. The next icon is the Crop Region tool, which lets you render a region of the scene. This is helpful to check out a specific area fast without having to wait for the whole scene to render. When you click the icon, a box appears in the window showing you which region is going to be rendered. You can adjust the size of the box by putting on the edges of the box. Next, let's see the Follow the Mouse tool. This tool lets us select the area that's going to be rendered first. Click on the icon with the mouse icon and place it where you want the render to start from. As you can see, the render starts on the cursor and radiates outward clearing the area we want to see first. The IPR Debug tool lets us choose the style of the render to show different elements like lighting, ambient occlusion, and UVs. The UVs, for example, show us the light scattering in the room, and let's make changes to the poorly lit areas. Here if we pull the history panel you can see that it's grayed out. This is because it's not enabled. To change the go to options, VFB setting then history and enable it. Now you can see the history icons appear and all the previous histories I added. To add a history simple click on the plus icon on the history panel and to delete it click on the history and press the X icon. Now let's check out the AB tool. This lets us bring two histories together and compare them. Let's say I want to compare these two bathroom design options. First I'll click on the AB icon, then assign A to the first history and B to the second history I want to compare. And you can use the virtual line to reveal and hide both histories and compare them. You can also change the line to a horizontal orientation or add another one. When using two lines, you need to add two more histories as C and D sections, and you can compare four scenes. The VFB has a shortcut, you can see the alignment in the VFB settings. You can also change the shortcut key by clicking on it and assigning a new one on the space where it says New Hockeys. To delete the hockey select it and press Remove Selected and press Save. To use light mix, we first have to add it as a render element. To do so, go to setting, render elements, then press the add button. From the list, select V-Ray Denoiser and V-Ray Light Mix and press OK, then render.
Once the render is done, you can make the denoiser visible, and it will reduce the noise in the scene significantly. You can also adjust the exposure, highlight burn and contrast. In the Test Resolution tool, you can adjust the size of the render by assigning a percentage to the resolution set on the render setting. By long pressing the Layer tool, we can add adjustment layers just like Photoshop. From the drop-down, select Curves. Select the point at the beginning of the graph. And within the other point, drag the line down then select the top point, and drag the point up this will make the dark areas darker, and the light areas brighter in our scene. Let's add another one from the drop-down select hue and saturation and play with the values till you get the mood you want. Now let's use Light Mix. In the Properties panel switch from RGB to Light Mix, and a list with all the lights in the scene will appear. You can check and uncheck the box on the list to turn the lights on and off. You can also type a value in the box to control the brightness of the light. Click on the white boxes on the right and a window will appear from here. We can adjust the color and temperature of the lights. For the temperature, enter a higher number to create a cool mood and a lower value to make the scene warm and cozy. Adjust the values as needed and press OK. As an example, let's change the color of the dome light. Click on the color and drag the template to blue. As you can see, the outside environment has changed to a nice night sky. Let's adjust the other lights and see the changes we can make. After finishing the adjustment, add the newly edited render to history to compare it with the previous one. As you can see, the edited render looks a lot better and more realistic. We can turn off different lights to see the effect and adjust them individually. Once you finish editing, click the Save icon on the pop-up window, select the file type you want, give the type in the image name and click Save. Make sure the image control is set to the best quality and press OK. This will save a single image file of the render. To save all the image channels, long press the Save icon, and from the drop-down select the second option to select the file type and the folder where the images will be saved and press Save then OK. This will save every channel and all the lights in a separate image file and give you more control over post-production work.